theme of my uh, talk really is about uh, my experience uh, and the experiences of my uh, fellow colleagues, fellow Black Pills, uh, as we uh, implemented uh, and uh, kind of adopted uh, uh, our teams uh, through the, the Agile process. Uh, so, so this is just more like an experience uh, sharing and uh, you, you know, what, what, what are the things that we did, what are the things that we enabled as Black Builds uh, and black belt and uh, agile is you know, it's just like you know, do these two just go together or you know they are just uh, two different things? So it's just kind of uh, sharing my experience. It's just, uh, just a quick, uh, uh, quick uh, kind of walkthrough of that. So uh, won't spend a lot of time on this. This is just kind of for the uh, you know for the uninitiated. Uh, in GE we do uh, what we call as lean six sigma. Uh, so it's a blend of Six Sigma, uh, which is more focused on improving quality, uh, both on products, uh, processes, uh, through reducing reduction of variation, you know, trying to keep the variation to a minimal on processes. Uh, but there's a, a lot of heavy emphasis uh, overlaid uh, in GE on Lean. And uh, uh, Lean really is, uh, it's about reducing waste, and uh, you see a lot of these concepts in Agile today. So it's, uh, it's, it's very complementary when you talk of Lean Six Sigma and Agile. And uh, essentially, and that's what I was trying to contrast here. Um, you know, it's, it's plan, do, check. plan, do, check, act on one end. And uh, if you look at uh, Six Sigma processes like the make, which is define the problem, define, measure, analyze the problem, try to come up with a solution improve it, sustain that change, and then you know, back again, driving these small incremental improvements uh, you know, instead of taking big leaps of change. Take those small incremental steps and kind of drive more sustainable change in process and product improvements in the organization. So it's, it's, it's a blend of both process and product. Sorry, my slides are jumping ahead. But, uh, but that's kind of how I see it. It's, uh, it's, it's a good blend uh, and it's a good uh, complementary uh, uh, kind of thing, both uh, Agile as well as uh, Six Sigma. So they're not really diverse or kind of different things. Um, so, you know, this is, this is my mental model of, uh, you know, how we went through the Agile adoption and, uh, you know, what our or my toolkit looked like, what the toolkit of my fellow colleagues looked like as we took the team through, uh, through this whole process uh, and, and we're still going it. So begin, you know, you know, this is nothing Six Sigma here. It's, it's a lot of uh, initial coaching uh, as a process, uh, you know, as uh, champions of the process, you kind of get with the teams, embed with the teams, uh, practically serving as Agile, as any Agile coach would, uh, them and the processes and, uh, you know, kind of get them through the motions of it. Uh, get help, you know, seek out help in the community, get people who know, uh, who faced similar problems before and, you know, kind of help the teams go over that learning curve. So this is, uh, you know, it's, it's all about coaching and being with the teams as they go through the process. And the, the, uh, the good part of uh, having, uh, you, know, you, you know, in GE we have these roles uh, which are more full-time and uh, the good part about these roles is you get a full-time army, of consultants for free, right? And you know they can embed with the teams. They are process champions. They can help sustain a uh, 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 transformation of the scale for an organization, which is uh, you know I'm talking of a big organization here. So we definitely need that kind of uh, strong support within. And also uh, uh, these guys can you know get get in folks from outside, uh, look broader and all of that. Uh, Next thing that we started focusing on as the team is going through the process mechanics is uh, essentially a lot of focus and emphasis on continuous integration. Uh, and uh, this essentially for us uh, is one of the key ingredients to being a successful agile team uh, and getting us to, uh, you know, really when you talk of continuous deployment today, these were the baby steps that we had taken way back uh, through simple projects, use of simple tools which with just common sense you know nothing uh, you take a simple value stream map look at your uh, you know if it's a build, big build process um, look at that analyze the bottlenecks uh, 
Uh, and typically we do this in, in groups of, uh, so that the, the entire team kind of comes together. It's a simple exercise, doesn't take a lot of time, but quickly you can chalk out, you know, these are the areas we need to go change. Maybe some of these are technology changes. Some of these are, uh, you know, just simple uh, things that the team can do and enable. It's just purely within their control. Um, we also use simple tools like looking, uh, you know, when we talk of build portability, uh, we're talking of cross-site teams in this case. We want the similar experience in different sites. So we look at uh, simple tools uh, that's there in Six Sigma. How do you reduce variation for your builds? You know, what's, what are the local factors influencing those and all of that. So from those baby steps, uh, uh, slowly and gradually uh, getting into more formal you know, definition of what success means on continuous integration, uh, getting to continuous deployment. So again, um, defining some of those measures along with the teams, uh, helping the teams understand where they are on these different axes and uh, you know, planning some of those improvements. Uh, really the, uh, the whole focus is to get the whole team into continuous deployment. So continuous integration, continuous deployment, one big uh, area of focus along with the whole agile transformation that's going on. So you know, that's like one piece that's going to hold this together. It's going to enable the teams to uh, sustain that change. The other thing that we experimented a lot with was, again, a lean concept, visual workplace. Uh, uh, it's, it's used a lot in manufacturing. We do quite a bit of that in software development also. Having the right indicators, uh, you know, the right visual dashboards, right from your build statuses, uh, even to your uh, program and process metrics and all of that, but having that clear, visible for the team, uh, because uh, those are the radiators that kind of keep everyone on the same page and, uh, you know. Uh, uh, so, so we've been, uh, these, uh, at least these have been uh, well received within the team, so we got a lot of these uh, at the development center. Now, this is a change, so, you know, it's, it's a team which is working in a different manner, a different fashion before, and using, uh, you know, concepts from Lean, uh, uh, you, you know, it's, 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 it's easy to kind of help the team embrace changes like these. So, so that's kind of the theme there. <clears throat> Retrospectives, so nothing new about it, but uh, uh, once in a while, uh, we kind of have facilitated retrospectives. So uh, getting in with the team, um, using tools, uh, you know, we've all used agile assessments before, uh, working on what those agile assessments are specifically, you know, uh, for this organization, um, helping drive some meaningful actions out of those conversations. Uh, 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 we've also experimented with cause maps before, uh, uh, you know, trying to look at the multiple causes that could uh, have happened in any significant failure. So if the team is not consistently, um, say it's not consistently meeting uh, its, its sprint goals uh, for successive sprints, or maybe there are some critical issues that are repeatedly getting discovered, uh, what's, uh, uh, cause maps have been a good tool to use to identify, uh, you know, one or more process failure points again. So uh, some of these simple tools, again, borrowed from the Lean Six Sigma toolkit, employed into, um, into and embedded with the Scrum or Agile processes. So one thing which we've been trying a bit uh, uh, lately is uh, Kaizen, which is really uh, another lean concept. Uh, small incremental changes, uh, so uh, these actually come out from your retrospectives. It could just come out, uh, you know, during the day-to-day -day working of the team. And the idea is uh, take your team step by step, improve them, one level up, one level up, but small baby steps. Uh, so we got, uh, you know, we tried different things, get small Kaizen boards uh, moving around. You know, every team has a Kaizen board. Uh, or you could even uh, post these on your Scrum board, uh, or you have your e-Kaizens. We've tried different things with this, but the idea really is to, to drive a, uh, uh, an incremental improvement culture, uh, leveraging Kaizen, again, a lean tool. <clears throat> um, last but not the least, uh, metrics. And this is uh, you know, one area where you know, we've not, uh, the last word has not been said yet. So a continuous refinement of uh, what are the right measures 
uh, for the teams, uh, both for the teams, for the management, for the stakeholders, uh, you know, look at different aspects, execution, health, uh, innovation, culture. Uh, so different measures, I would go into a lot of these details, but uh, uh, essentially that's another area where we uh, help teams uh, focus on uh, giving a good measure to their success and uh, uh, helping them understand, you know, what are the areas they need to kind of focus more on and improve. <clears throat> Um, sustaining change, so you know, just like in any true um, Six Sigma project, you have uh, what we call as the control phase. Uh, and essentially, it's not about control, but it's about sustaining change. Uh, so, so two elements really there. Uh, one is the continued uh, leadership support, the top-down support in the organization uh, that you know, this is the process, we support the teams, the teams are empowered uh, uh, you know, to do the right things. The other thing is uh, having the right systems and structures and uh, you know by systems and structures i mean uh, uh, as as an organization as big as ge uh, you know you have these huge processes so how do we lean out these processes make them more relevant for software development uh, make them more agile uh, uh, how do we kind of uh, put very simple uh, what we call as work instructions you know leverage uh, uh, you, you know, the, the wiki and uh, easily accessible sources of information for the team, simple one-page instructions instead of 100-page manuals and processes. So uh, a lot of work went on that end as well so that the teams can kind of uh, understand and, um, you know, uh, what it takes to do their uh, job and, uh, and all of that and help with the onboarding of new people on the team and so, so different things. There. So this uh, is, uh, is kind of, uh, it's, it's a short talk really, but that is uh, roughly, if you see the different tools which are, you know, it's all common sense. I've not talked of anything which is really outside here uh, of what the, the group may know already, but it's, it's really about, uh, these are very complementary. So Six Sigma is not, it's not alien uh, to Agile, uh, you know. And, uh, and definitely uh, in GE, we have an organization of uh, dedicated black bills uh, who kind of uh, uh, really support a, a huge organizational transformation that we're going through. And you know, we've, we've made good progress on that as well. So uh, with that, you know, that's uh, it's a short talk, but uh, that's, that's kind of what I had to share today. Yeah, the Kaizen boards are, we have just simple boards which, uh, you know, with these small cards where people can write up suggestions for improvements. Uh, uh, say a build machine is too slow. You know, that's an example of a, a small Kaizen. You know, can you just replace the build machine or can you use a different tool? Uh, so those are simple which the team can pick up during the retrospectives and, you know, take simple actions upon uh, to improve their processes. Nothing different from retrospectives. But it's more live. It's more in line. Yep. Yeah, that's that's a good question. So the question is on you know what tools uh, uh, from Six Sigma uh, help in Agile, uh, and really uh, our emphasis has not been to uh, kind of. Uh, put a lot of tools. Uh, Six Sigma is really about process change. It's about culture change. Uh, and uh, use the simplest tools that can help you meet your goals. So a simple cause map, uh, or if, even if it's a, a simple, you know, the visual workplace, that's another example. Use simple tools to uh, uh, do. FMEA is used quite a bit. Uh, we've also experimented with cause maps. That's another tool. Um, uh, the other things I showed you with Continuous uh, value stream maps, uh, just comparing variations of bills and those kind of things. So very simple tools, essentially. Uh, nothing, nothing much. Uh, we don't do hypothesis testing. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's that's uh, uh, again the last word has not been said on that. Uh, we've uh, experimented a bit with agile assessments. Uh, look at uh, what are the, the, the values we want to, uh, we want our good, uh, you know, the empowered Agile teams to have. Um, we uh, looked outwards in the community, got some ideas from them, blended into our own as Agile assessment. So that's one tool that we've used. Uh, we've also tried different other uh, techniques to have some 
measures around uh, culture. So, um, so it's it's like a you know I don't have like one metric for that. Yep, yep, yep. We've, uh, at least through the initial phases of the transformation, we use the Agile assessments to kind of uh, look organizationally, you know, when you're looking at a huge organization, how do you know what are the areas as an organization do you need to focus on when you look at an Agile transformation? You know, is it tools, is it continuous um, integration, or is it more of a backlog? Or so, so that was a good tool that we kind of, uh, Deployed and uh, uh, we actually ran it per team, per Scrum team, and then kind of aggregated that view across an organization, across different business units. Most of these, we because we are a product development company, so these are more the teams kind of uh, stay along for a while. Uh, Long as uh, I would say five years to ten years, some of these products uh, you know that we sustain, you know, these are all uh, applications that we sell, and uh, we can't rapidly change because these are all engineering applications. So, uh, so long. So, so now the teams do they stay for five years? No, that's a question mark. But at least you know a good year, two years, where you can kind of see the transformation as it goes along. In my personal opinion uh, and my personal experience, yes, uh, uh, long-lived teams are successful because you go over the norming, storming, forming. Uh, you get into performing uh, uh, really by the time you get into 10s and 15 sprints and uh, the, the dynamics are well set, in, especially if you have a good team. It's, uh, you know, if I put it in, uh, in few words, it's, it's our ability to be able to respond to change. Uh, you know, if, if you look at the current scenarios, the, we, we need to be able to uh, be responding dynamically. Uh, so Lean and Agile gives you a lot, a lot of that framework which was missing earlier. When we used to do two-year, three-year projects, we get locked down, uh, you know, into a plan and we're completely insensitive about the changes that is going on across. And uh, so that was, you know, one key driver. The other thing is uh, improving predictability of programs. It's, it's much better when it's shorter compared to the longer. Uh, so uh, quality, that's another measure. So these are some, and given it's, a, it's such a strong quality culture, uh, these kind of come uh, naturally. So when you look at Lean across uh, GE, which is, you know, a lot of GE is non-software. Uh, and, uh, and then when you say Agile, you know, this kind of completely blends. Uh, so uh, even from top down in the organization, it's, it's very easy to kind of communicate and convince, uh, you know, this, this is what we need to do for software development. Uh, you know, this is exactly what we've been doing all along in GE across the broader company. So uh, it's... Uh, it's 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 kind of blends together. So basically, the model that you follow for project is agile. Uh, I don't know what we can call it, but but it's it's a lot agile. We follow a lot of Scrum actually, uh, with uh, with uh, a lot of uh, XP, good XP technical practices. So that's uh, that's what we do. Uh, but uh, in order to be able to communicate change better, uh, we do good correlations between lean concepts. And you know how it can well apply in the Six Sigma lean uh, in the Agile world. So, is this a model that is applying for all of your IT projects, or only for some of them? We are trying to pilot for for the larger organization. I would say this is the model, and we we are coming together more as a community within the big organization that we have two three hundred thousand people. As you know, this is 
this is what uh, agile in, soft, uh, in software means, and this is how we do it in GE. And a lot of exchange uh, is kind of getting enabled. So I would say broadly, this is kind of what we've been doing. Uh, we kind of, uh, uh, so what we do is a very non-intrusive way of working with the teams so that the teams really don't uh, feel the burden of another process or, or, or a different paradigm on top of what they're already getting used to. So we, we kind of touch them at, uh, say, retrospectives or we touch them uh, in their uh, daily builds, for example, or even the daily scrums. So the, the aim is to really kind of weave within instead of, oh, this is a Six Sigma tool which you should go and use. So, so that's, that's how we do it. So, so we don't uh, factor them as separate stories. Uh, we blend it. No, no. It, the way it works is, uh, if you see a team having a problem, uh, you 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 may be invited, or you may ha you may be getting in also, depending on the situation. And then, uh, what what you can suggest is, uh, so this is your problem. Start doing the mo model of that problem. You can use the tools from your tool set uh, and help them solve their problem. So essentially, that's how it blends in uh, with their problem. So we we don't. Uh, uh, four stools. We we make good use of it. Yep. Yep. Help them in problem solving. Yep. 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 Because that's the right way to drive change, uh, uh, and that way the acceptability of that change is much more uh, instead of uh, ruling by the stick. No, and uh, the aim is really not to enforce a use of a tool or, you know, you, if you have this problem, you have to use this tool. No, if you can find the solution to your problem, well, that's great. You know, that's, that's exactly what you have to do because as coaches and as black belts, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's success for us because, you know, the team is on its own and, um, you know, they know how to solve their problems. But if, if it's a really uh, tough problem or if you're trying to figure out how do I formulate or how do I crystallize what this problem is, you can, you know, you can help facilitate that problem solving with the right tool set, which is not too, uh, you know, overbearing. It's, it's just at this level that it's needed and it's simple. Okay, thank you, thank you.